Hello, I'm Papa Ponderosa. Welcome to this in-depth look at my recently released map for City Skylines 2, Victoria, BC. Here's a quick outline for this video. First, I'll give a brief history of the real location. Next, I'll show some of the real-life infrastructure and landmarks I featured in the map and provide some rationale for why I included them. This will include the landscape, highways, grid, rail, map tiles, and more. Feel free to use the video chapters to go to the section you're most interested in. There will be links in the video description to the map trailer and the Paradox Mods page. Alright, let's move on to our first topic. Victoria, the capital city of British Columbia, Canada, is located on the southern tip of Vancouver Island, featuring the picturesque Victoria Harbour and its inland extension, the Gorge. Its landscape, sculpted by the retreat of Pleistocene glaciation, features geological deposits and a varied topography and soil composition. The diverse physical geography, from the fertile southern parts to the sandy eastern areas adjoining Oak Bay, has played a crucial role in the city's development and its natural habitats. Blessed with a temperate marine west coast climate, Victoria experiences mild, damp winters and dry, mild summers, with some areas enjoying a Mediterranean climate. This relatively stable climate allows for a rich assortment of native flora like the Gary Oak and Pacific Mandro, or Arbutus tree, and also supports exotic species such as palms, eucalyptus, and even bananas. The city's lush gardens and parks thriving with both native and exotic plants underscore its moniker as the City of Gardens, celebrated through the annual flower count. The area of Greater Victoria was originally inhabited by the Coast Salish peoples, including the Lekwungen or Songhees, whose deep connection with the land is evidenced by thousands of years of habitation. European settlement began in earnest with the establishment of Fort Victoria in 1843 by James Douglas of the Hudson's Bay Company amidst the anticipation of British American boundary settlements. The subsequent treaties between European settlers and indigenous peoples, though contentious, marked the beginning of European influence and the complex history of land rights in the region. Victoria's transformation from a small fur trading post to a bustling urban centre was significantly influenced by its role as a supply centre for gold rushes and its strategic maritime position. The shift to modern transportation, highlighted by the establishment of BC Ferries in 1960 and the presence of Victoria International Airport, has mitigated the geographic isolation of island life. The city's commitment to preserving its heritage while embracing modern infrastructure is evident in the revitalization of historic areas like Chinatown and the integration of public walkways and green spaces, ensuring Victoria's continued growth and connectivity. Okay, here we are in game looking at the map. In the following sections, you will notice that I have tried to include historical infrastructure from a few different points in history. I feel this really tries to tell the story of the city and how it evolved. I had to get creative in a few places to make things functional for gameplay, so hopefully that translates well in game. The map was created using a one-to-one -one height map and we can also see the world map beyond the buildable area. Across the water to the east, you can see San Juan Island in Washington State. I slightly modified the terrain in several locations to build the transportation infrastructure and provide a few areas for easy building. I cut Elk Lake a bit short because the water in lakes does not extend beyond the buildable area and I don't know if I liked how it looked. So this was a, one of the compromises I had to make. The majority of the terraforming was to create the impression of creeks and make the coastline look better with more accurate beaches and headlands. This probably took the most time in the map creation process, except for maybe trying to figure out how the water worked. 
I also terraformed the existing port area and provided this breakwater or jetty. The actual breakwater has a lighthouse at the end and I would have loved to put that asset in, but it's just not in game. So I put in this uh, gazebo or pagoda, whatever you want to call it. Next, you've probably already noticed the road network. Starting with the highways, I built the modern day highways and service interchanges almost exactly as they are in real life. There are a few slight differences in the geometry and lane configurations. This feels a bit overbuilt for a starting build to me, but should be able to handle traffic for a decent sized city and not need upgrading for a while. I really like how these interchanges turned out. The road tools in CS2 are really nice. While doing this, I gain an appreciation for how nice some of the infrastructure in the region is. The highways then transition into this grid network in the starting area. I was unsure if I wanted to include this grid because I understand not everyone wants a starting grid. If you want to play on this map and don't like a starting grid, it doesn't take too long to demolish it. I eventually decided to include the grid because I came across a couple of really neat maps from the late 1800s. This grid is basically a one-to-one -one recreation of what was planned in 1861, shown here in this map by J.D. Pemberton. The extent of the grid here that I put in isn't quite as much as what was shown in the 1861 plan, but I think it's a good start for most people. A few things to note here. I have named most of the streets as they are in real life. I wasn't able to name all the streets accurately because of the way CS2 makes roads continuous around corners and doesn't allow the level of customization that was available in CS1. For example, Pandora Ave bends around here at Johnson Street Bridge and this street to the north should be Johnson Street. This was possible with the addresses and names mod. Over here, we have a bay that doesn't exist in real life, or at least not now, it used to. Formerly known as James Bay, a mud flat that was used for dumping refuse was considered hazardous, so people at the time voted to infill the area. The new land was offered to the Canadian Pacific Railway for the construction of one of their newest luxury hotels, the Empress Hotel, which began construction in 1904 and was completed in 1908. This pedestrian bridge I have placed here represents the old James Bay Bridge that used to support trams and was later converted into a road with a retaining wall to hold back the tide. You may also notice I've included Johnson Street Bridge. I chose a more modern bridge because I don't really have a lot of asset options and this one seemed to work best for the span that was required. Unfortunately, the grand bridge asset was just too big. I modified how the bridge transitions into the downtown area to more closely represent what the modern road network looks like. I think it works well and it creates this couplet system with one-way roads through downtown. And lastly, if we move a bit further south, you can see this gravel road that loops around. This is Beacon Hill Park, as shown from this map in 1889 with a chariot race. Who knew? Circle Drive was historically used for horse racing and the park was used for cricket matches. Alright, let's move on to rail. I had to take a couple of liberties with the rail network to include it in the map. Modern day Victoria does not have rail. There are some rail tracks, but they don't have trains actually going on those tracks. Much of the old tracks were removed and replaced by pedestrian and cycling paths. The rail through Esquimalt, the peninsula to the west of downtown Victoria, is still existing but not operational. I found a couple of maps from 1931 and 1946 showing the railway from Esquimalt crossing the Johnson Street Bridge and turning down Store Street to terminate in the old industrial area. Since the rail assets in game are really big, I did not include this in the map. I instead brought the rail down under Johnson Street Bridge 
to meet up with the Saanich Line, going north. These did not historically connect like this, but it creates a functional rail network in-game that I think looks pretty neat. I also included this small rail yard that represents a historic rail yard in the same location. The rail line then continues north over the Selkirk Trestle Bridge, which is now for cyclists and pedestrians. Unfortunately, there are no trestle-style rail bridges in-game, yet. Then we follow the rail up this trench under the highways and get to Swan Lake, where there is another trestle crossing. This intersection here is interesting because the rail line terminated here at one point, between 1931 and 1946, as we can see when comparing these two maps. To provide a functional rail network, I extended the rail north, following the old route, all the way to the edge of the buildable area. And if we ever get cycling infrastructure in the game, you can do what Victoria did, and replace all of the rail network with bike lanes. Before we wrap up, I want to quickly highlight a few other details I have included in the map. This canal here is known as the Gorge, and this larger water body is called Portage Inlet. These are a couple of very important water bodies within Victoria, and I wanted to pay attention to the detail here. These waters were important to the First Nations that inhabited the area prior to European settlement. It was culturally and spiritually significant and was used for foraging. Post-settlement, the area became polluted with sewage and industrial waste. However, cleanup efforts since the 1990s have resulted in significant improvement in the water quality here. As for the map, I did a lot of underwater terraforming to give a similar appearance to what we see on Google Earth right now. You've probably been wondering what this circle over here was. If you're familiar with Victoria, you may recognize it as the Ring Road from University of Victoria. Originally planned in 1961, the area within the Ring Road is intended for pedestrians only. I didn't connect it to any other road network, but I wanted to include a gravel road that was a frame for those that want to include it in their builds. Players can easily remove it if they don't want it. I'd also like to talk about this little one-way track on this farm over here. This is the only detailed farm on the map. I wanted to limit my farm detailing to allow more space for players to build their own farms. However, I also wanted to include something unique that exists in the area. The land was initially cleared for farming in the 1930s and has changed hands over the years, but is still an active farm and now with a market and a train ride. This is a fun local attraction that is entertaining for families, but also educates kids on the importance of farming. In the area around the farm, you can see I included a few existing roads as the frame for a small farming community with a rail connection. And lastly, I want to discuss the map tiles. This is something that I think is really cool. I've adjusted the map tiles to represent the real-life neighborhoods in the area. This map includes five municipalities, the City of Victoria, Township of Esquimalt, District of Oak Bay, District of Saanich, and the Town of View Royal. It also includes two First Nations reserves for the Esquimalt and Songhees Nations. I used the image overlay mod to see the neighborhoods in those municipalities. There were a few compromises, mostly for simplicity, where boundaries meandered a lot in small areas, or I wanted to capture specific infrastructure within a tile. I considered breaking up some of the larger neighborhoods, but decided to be consistent. I think it turned out pretty good so far. Let me know if you have any thoughts on this approach to custom map tiles. It has been an absolute pleasure to put this map together, and I love nerding out about the history of how cities and the infrastructure develop. If you know Victoria, 
please let me know your experience and whether you think I've done the region justice with this map. I recently released the map as well as a cinematic trailer. Both can be found in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, take care, and happy building.